All right, so guys, so um, for the village of El Portal, this is a committee meeting. This is the Administration and Finance Committee meeting, and I'm calling it to order at 6.33 p.m. We're going to do a moment of silent meditation, followed by Pledge of Allegiance. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, may I please have roll call? Roll call, Chairperson Nickerson. Here. Vice Chair Roman. Here. Member Erbaum, also present for the record, Janice Jacoby, Village Clerk, Christy Alou, Village Manager, Inner Room, Village Attorney, uh, Norman Powell. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. I appreciate it. Um, so has everybody had a chance to look at the agenda? Uh, there are seven items on the agenda. And uh, if you guys are approving that, can I have an approval of the agenda? A motion to approve the agenda? A motion to approve. I'll second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, has anybody had a chance to look at the minutes? I, I remember last uh, committee meetings that most of them were tabled till the uh, <clears throat> until the next uh, committee meeting. Um, has anybody had a chance to look? And if so, do I have a motion, or, or do you guys want to table until the next committee meeting also? I have not had a chance to go over OK, here. no, not a problem. We'll table those until the next committee meeting. Thank you very much. Um, next is good and welfare. If anybody has something to come up and say about uh, this committee, um, Anything at all, you guys can come up and talk about that now. There will be another chance for you guys to come up and do that at the end of the committee meeting. So uh, you guys might get ideas later on, then you can come up and do that now. This is the Administration and Finance Committee. We're gonna move on to the uh, agenda items. <clears throat> the first agenda item is the, is the Legal Services uh, RFP. I'm gonna ask the wonderful Madam Manager to, uh, to kind of brief us and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Um, last fall, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Chairperson Nickerson. Uh, last fall, um, the council directed me to um, uh, put together an RFP uh, to find legal services uh, to address the interim status of our present uh, interim village attorney. And um, he has been interim for, I think almost two years so it is high time to, to move on to the permanent status. And so uh, an RFP was um, devised and put together for you all to review. Um, it came to this committee and I was asked to just hold off until we re came to the, this committee meeting uh, here in January um, to find out if you wanted to do more with it or if you had some additions, some subtractions, whatever your, um, it's, you know, at your discretion so if you have anything to add or you want me to take out please do and i'll take your direction thank you very much madam manager um yes this was a a, a discussion that we we had you guys uh, as, the, as the manager um just told us i don't know if everybody here remembered that and then um we did take it to did we take it to full no because the mayor i remember the mayor speaking on it that's why i was so the mayor was on that committee at that time was on this committee at that time and then we decided to have that RFP uh, be created and then to bring it back to this council to then see if we wanted to have any additions or deletions or anything like that um, before we took it to, or before we decided if we were gonna take it to the full council or what we were gonna do about that. Um, <clears throat> this is for legal services uh, before I go any further, um, because this is about legal services, I would ask the attorney if he has anything that he wants to say or anything that he wants to add you know i always i give everybody a, a no chance. i'm fine according to the latest <laughs> ethics um commission ruling I, I cannot have any participation yeah. whatsoever in either the discussion or review of this okay thank you very much Welcome. i appreciate it um <clears throat> that being said as far as the as far as the rfp uh uh process goes well, before I even get to that, that being said, um, for I'm going to open up to the rest of the committee members if uh, Councilperson Urbom or Councilperson um, Roman 
has anything that they would like to add or any questions or anything like that, um, I would love for you guys to speak. So my questions or my comments are on the um, contact person for the RFP, being that this position reports directly to the council um, and not the village manager. I'm wondering if the RFP and there's some inconsistencies with the RFP at the beginning it says that the office of the village of the clerk will solicit and collect and then um, it has the contact person as Christia the village manager so I just think that those are some items that we need to discuss okay so you would like it to for the contact person <laughs> you would like the whole council to be the contact no I would imagine that the chair of this committee would be the contact Yeah, yes, Madam Manager. Okay. I understand that this, pers this uh, position does not report to the village manager, but the RFP is usually run through the yes. village manager in terms of when there are follow-up questions uh, or um, if there needs to be an amendment made to the RFP, the village manager typically handles that. I mean, that's how I run the other RFPs. I am certainly open to allowing a member of the council or the committee to be the point persons. Also, um, the same with other jurisdictions. Uh, the clerk is usually the one who solicits, puts it out to the community in that way. So that is why she is listed as well. Yeah, thank it's you. It's about the process, not the content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I, that's why I was, I was, I was going to kind of say because it's, it, and I understand what you're saying, uh, Councilperson Roman. But um, for every RFP that we ever do, the manager is the point person. Um, and there's nothing that says that for you know, the, the RFP that pertains to you know, legal, legal services that it would be any different than uh, um, any other RFP. And that was a, that's the only, the, the only confusion I'm having. How have we yeah. done it in the past? We've had it to where the RFP, the point person has been the, um, has been the manager whoever the village manager was at that time. Whenever we, and when we had situations that came through like the clerk or any of our past attorneys, the RFP process, um, the point person was the village manager. And then as, as her being, or her or him was the point person, the final say of course comes back to, um, through the committee and then to the council if it passes through the committee. But as far as the point person, um, the point person is always the, uh, the manager but that's why we're here you know now um, to say okay like just like you were saying like we feel like this should be changed or that should be changed or whatever should be changed and then we decide that um, here while we're here would it be yes sorry mate uh, would it be reasonable to, to think that uh, that uh, respondents would contact the manager, but the manager would be forwarding the respondent's uh, resume, what have you. To the entire okay, committee. To the committee. Yes. That way, is, would that be reasonable and prudent? Yes, yes, okay. that, that's the way it should be. Because, and, and that's the reason why I wouldn't be the point person, because all of those things have to come into either like the manager or the clerk, because I can't forward it to you guys. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's just the process. It's a, it's a process thing. It's not the, like he said, it's not, it wasn't content. Yes. Also, um, once the RFP is closed on, on the closing date, then the, um, all of the applications are then sent to you all as a committee, and you all make decisions from that point. I'm out of the process at that point until it comes to, you know, uh, administration, pro uh, you know, at the back end, if you then need to make the announcement or whatever you do. But um, it's just for the purpose of collecting the applications. It's not for selection. Mm -hmm. It's not for managing yeah. um, the applicants in, in that way is just to answer questions, yeah. uh, to issue amendments if necessary, to respond in that way. It's uh, not for selection. Yeah. Yeah, the, count, the committee and council always make final decisions when it comes to that. No, that I know. Yeah. So, is there anything else that uh, stands out that. Uh, so, who would we, who's the attorney that we're planning on using for, because um, we do need to have an attorney review a final contract or a contract. So if we, once the RFP goes out and we look at the candidates, we interview, mm -hmm. et cetera, and we decide that we're moving forward, 
the next step would be that we're going into uh, to enter a contract. To, yeah, to enter so, a contract. So um, we need to define who that attorney is going to be. Yeah, um, yes, Madam Manager. Okay. Um, we do have an employment attorney working with us on some other employment matters. I would suggest we use, utilize their service, or we can also use the uh, Florida League of Cities. We have legal service through them as well, who can also assist us with contract negotiations and contract development for employment. What would the cost differences be? Uh, for the Florida League of Cities, it would probably be free. For the external uh, entity, it would probably be with a fee. So I would explore Florida League first, and then from there I'll make any recommendations. But as you all know, you, uh, the council itself has um, oversight over legal. So I would make those recommendations about the differences in, in um, services for that to you. Yeah, so I was going to say, um, thank you, um, Madam Manager. I was going to say in the past, uh, when, we, when it came down to um, negotiating the, any contracts that we had um, up, we would decide, you know, it would come back in, in, um, to the committee, we would decide uh, who we were going to use as far as uh, outside counsel for that. Um, but if we're discussing this, I think at this point yeah. in time, we should, you know, it's definitely a big point uh, financially. Yeah. And then um, also so that we're prepared. Now, who negotiated his um, our uh, interim attorney's original contract? Well, this is what I was going to say because I remember because I was going to I was going to ask a question for <laughs> also for the manager's contract. Who negotiated that one? Joe Geller. Okay. And, and Councilperson Roman. And Councilperson Roman. Okay. So. Um, so I think that what so we so it was a chair of the it was a chair yeah the, admin the and chair was involved it was involved yes. for sure. yeah yeah whenever the yeah whenever we deal with the contract the chair is always involved but as far as but you're absolutely correct is you saying that we do need uh, outside legal counsel though to also um, to be involved in that as far as the RFP itself um, are there any other things that that stand out as far as that. Um, to be quite honest, it's pretty lengthy, so I didn't, I would like to. You want more time? I want more time to take a look at it because, I mean, I just briefly okay. looked at it with all the other um, PNC stuff. So, you know, and I think we had it before, but my apologies. Yes. Yeah. I, I provided it back in September. No, I know that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just completely forgot about that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys reviewed it in detail. No, and. You uh, can raise questions. And right, no, I, I, I think we're. Good understand that we're in agreement in terms of where we're going with issuing the RFP. I think that by next committee meeting, we'll have time to review this in detail. And I don't know that we're necessarily in a state of urgency right now. Really, just again, uh, just out of prudence to be going through this process. Um, and so I don't see it as an urgent matter. I think we're okay till the next committee meeting where we really have a chance to digest some of the details. So that way, we're as prepared as possible when we kick it to an attorney. Well, we certainly should check the availability of our interim attorney and ensure that um, he's okay with the timeline. Okay. Um, because we can't assume. First of all, yeah, so that's what I was going to say. You just took the word out of my mouth. Um, because I, like I always say, I always try to, uh, you know, let everybody have a say. So um, before I get to the, uh, to the uh, attorney, so are we, are we clear that um, besides the other things you guys are going to look and then come back to the committee meeting, which means that at the next committee meeting, we are going to, everybody's going to have their notes in detail of their questions and their comments, all right? And then we go from there, make the decisions as far as the RFP, all right? Is that, are we, are we, is everybody good with that? They have their notes and everything, their comments ready for next committee meeting? All right, that's perfect. Okay, and then in the, um, while they're doing that, um, we'll also start to, uh, to, to just kind of like put out the fillers about, or kind of like inquire about when it does come down to the, uh, the contract, which if it's Florida League of Cities, if it's, you know, 
and absolutely I'll, so we'll I'll start clarify to that look too. at that also okay. and, and may I add so, too if you all have during the process of your uh, review uh, just, you are free to call me if you have any questions I was going to say that also because I saved us some time because already we're coming back to another, another committee meeting so that means that if at the next committee meeting people are like okay what about this or I have a question about this I have a question about this that knocks it to the next committee meeting mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying so it's like so um so if you do have questions between now and the next committee meeting um if you can, please reach out to the manager because the manager could probably go through those things with you and fix those things. So then when we come back, um, you know, save us a lot of time with that. Thank you guys very, very much. Uh, the uh, Mr. Attorney, how are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> the timeline that we're doing and what you just heard about us coming back, you're, you're like, I have no. Whatever your pleasure is. I appreciate it. Just wanted you to have your voice. Madam Clerk, before we go any further, is there anything you would like to add? Um, Council Person Roman, anything else you would like to add? Okay, so just to clarify, the next steps is that the manager is going to um, determine what the costs are if we're hiring an attorney or we're going through Florida League of Cities, what that process would be. And then um, the committee is going to come back with questions um, or, or, comments. Well, or contact the manager with any questions ahead of time and then come back with a list of items or, or for approval for yeah. the next committee meeting. Yes. Okay. And those items will be um, related to the RFP as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. Because like deletions, additions, and things like that, but to the RFP as a whole. Councilperson Urbom, any um, thing you want to say before? I'm good. All right, thank you very much. And Madam Manager, anything you would like to say before? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, you guys. We're gonna move on to the next agenda item, which is um, G2. This would be the building um, permit fee increase uh, recommendation. Um, Village Manager, if you would take that away from us, please. Thank you. This is most, oh, I'm sorry, I needed to pass this out to you all. Um, I've been working with our new uh, building clerk and, and CAP government uh, extensively over the last few months, and they have made, thank you. No, there's, okay, but there's two pages for you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. And so um, we are the lowest price building permitting in the county. I'm uh, providing you, I, I did provide a, as, as supplemental to the agenda, a, a cost comparative to uh, Biscayne Park, but this uh, the document that's being passed out now also shows North Bay Village and Miami Shores permitting costs. Um, the middle or the El Portel permit cost is a recommendation made by CAP government. CAP also represents some other, uh, Biscayne Park and some other municipalities. They also do their building permitting, but they've made these recommendations. I think this is a, a, a imperative for us to sustain the building department and, and we have to increase the fees. Um, we are missing a, an opportunity and, and I think, uh, well, I do recommend that we, we, um, we look at these fees. I, I know this is mostly for the sake of discussion and for your review because this will have to go before our community um, as well as we're raising fees. But I do want you to understand, uh, I think on that first page it shows uh, the, the list, the current uh, fees yeah. are um, extremely low. And uh, you can go through them. I, there are like 26 different uh, items listed here but I mean some things we're charging no zero we're not, we don't charge for it or it's a hundred dollars whereas you know other municipalities are starting at 125 or to 200 <coughs> I mean there are some some missed opportunities for us I really um, think that we should review um, as you know we're, we have a lot of things coming before us a lot of renovations and new builds and what have you coming before us and um, this village could really um, utilize these extra funds. I mean, we're behind the curve and it hasn't been changed um, in decades from what I understand. So um, CAP government recommended these, um, the, the El Portel permit cost column. Uh, I, I think those are reasonable. Uh, they would put us in line with other municipalities and would assist us tremendously in that department and helping our um, you know, general fund. And, uh, and I ask if you have any recommendations or thoughts on this to please share them with me. I, I do recognize we need to do this publicly as well and have uh, the input from the community and their buy-in as well. But I, I think it's a good time for us to talk about it since we're in January. So um, let me just first, first say thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for trying to um, always in, bring our village, you know, update our village in the, in, the, in the most proper ways possible. 
All right, so there's a lot here. Okay, so first of all, as you said, this, if we, you know, if we're going, if we, if we would end up doing this, we would also have to let the residents know and get their input, not input, but kind of let, we, we have to let them know and um, let them have a say in this. I would also want to hear um, the mayor's voice. So, which this is not, this is not about, uh, you know, you going out and purchasing something to where it has to come back to the committee or has to go to the full council, you know, but at the same time, um, you guys know how I am. I feel like it should uh, go to the full council before we would actually make that final decision. I understand also that that we're going over this right now. I see that you know Councilperson Urbom's taking notes. I see that Councilperson Roman is going over taking notes. So I'm going to open it up for you, to you guys in a second. But my suggestion would be, um, again, with the same thing as, as we were just we got finished discussing, is that we allow everybody on the committee to have time to look at this if you guys feel like you need that time. May I for a minute? For, for one second. And you guys feel like you need that time and then we come back to the, to the um, committee and then because you, cause you guys might have different suggestions about, oh, well this shouldn't be this price, this should be this price. So give you guys until the next committee meeting, we come back to the committee. If we feel like we can, we agree on the prices, I think we should then pass it to the full council because I would like to hear the mayor's voice on this also. And then from there at the full council meeting, we say, yeah, this is great. Go ahead, let's implement these new um, prices. Councilperson Roman. So if I'm not mistaken, we looked at this at some point during my terms. Um, I don't know if they were uh, changed. I can't remember. And I don't remember if that was, Ro it might have been Roseman during the time of Roseman, um, that we did, I'm pretty, I'm like 60% that we did increase some fees. Yeah. So um, that's number one. We should look at that because that really wasn't that long ago. I've only been on the dais for three years. It was, right? It was this Okay. So, so they were raised? The, there were fees that were increased, she's right. Can you? There were fees that were increased, and that was actually done through PNZ. That plus Serbia came up because they said we were the lowest. Right. But if they were building her fees. I was, I was just going to say, though, the fees that were changed, though, if I remember, it was like two or three. It was a few, so you have to compare it. Yeah, we have to go back to that. Yeah, yeah there we were a few. There, there were, were some few. residents that were a little upset with some yeah. of the fee yeah. changes. Yeah. Now I remember. Right. Okay. There were She's some correct. changes, so that's number one. Mm -hmm. So before we even, you know, entertain this, I'd like to first, you know, I would recommend that we look at what we did not long ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then certainly, I mean, there is room, I, I, I always say, you know, there is room for us to... Um, collect where we, you know, to be com competitive or, you know, incomparable, not competitive, mm -hmm. comparable with other um, cities. Mm -hmm. I'm a little confused because I see different numbers on the sheets. Mm -hmm. So is the Word document um, the current fees? Yes. Okay. And then are the uh, the Excel, the, these proposed are the proposed fees? Okay. So these are proposed. Yes. Okay. Because in some cases, okay, so if they, this cap was the one that gave you the recommendations? Yes. Okay, all right. So if we could just share, we would sure. look yeah. into that first and then, yeah. Okay. Councilperson, just a couple of, uh, just quick comments here. Because mm -hmm. um, we'll digest it later. So uh, this is wonderful to see, honestly, this is, great to mm -hmm. to be able to just see it right in front of you what it is we're we're dealing with um, and so I like that there's some zero items in the current where they're no longer zero over here that's great yeah. um, and then my real comment goes to really the first item in terms of minimum fee for all permits I won't get into the details of every item but I just want to talk about that as we think about uh, where we're headed with this as we meet next time mm -hmm. 
So the, currently it's $100 is the minimum fee for all permits proposed raised to 200. That sounds very logical and I'm probably possibly on board with that. Mm -hmm. I just really uh, want to remind specifically this committee, but the council overall, that if we're paying attention to what's happening in Miami-Dade County, we are absolutely targeted by people looking to get in while the getting's good, right? Which would inform us that perhaps we do want to really raise some of these because we know what's coming, right? Conversely though, I personally am reluctant to raise that minimum fee for all of the residents who currently live here who um, are trying to get basic kind of things done, um, that they wouldn't be thinking twice about doing it properly simply because we've doubled that minimum fee requirement. So, so, so overall, glancing at this, I definitely think we're on the right track and greatly appreciate the work that went into this. I know it was time consuming, had to have been. Um, and so in addition to that though, I really, you're gonna hear me say this a lot in almost every committee that I'm on, I want us to value this village more than anybody else coming from anywhere else will do. And so I think if we go at it from that point of what we have here and what we're trying to preserve, and I, especially when it comes to issues like this, I will bring this up in terms of class diversity. So communities that have more class diversity are healthier communities than communities that are, are, are only with one you know, demographic socioeconomically, right? Mm -hmm. and, so, um, and so this is going to be front and center for every municipality in Miami-Dade County for the foreseeable future, I would think. And so for us, again, because we do consider ourselves to be so special, I certainly think we are. Um, I just want us to value ourselves mm -hmm. more so than even anyone else coming in. So, but that, to me, the minimum fee being doubled is a little bit of a, a concern that we're not considering our, our long-term residents who are who are here now. So I'll, I'll just say that, but overall, I'm excited about where where this is and looks good, so. Mm -hmm. Councilperson Roman. I agree. I mean, I think that that is one of the ones that stood out, the $200, um, th that increase. I would have to look at it, you know, um, in more detail and, and compare it. But um, again, I'm not opposed to making changes. I just want to take a look at what we did in the past, recently, in the recent past, and ensure that, you know, we're not over, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I will, I will um, follow up and, and find out what was passed uh, during Mr. Roseman's ta tenure, and then, um, you know, any suggestions you have. These, these are just my recommendations. Clearly, this is, you know, um, ultimately up to um, council and, uh, you know, just for you to digest is our first look. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just putting this on your radar and please feel free to, you know, make any suggestions uh, you, you feel uh, necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Manager. Councilperson Erbaum, anything else? Madam Manager, anything else? Councilperson uh, Roman? Mm -mm. No. Uh, Mr. Attorney? Yes, um, yes, just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, in Chapter 5 of the Code, there's an appendix mm -hmm. that has all of the fees there currently. So maybe a good idea for, you, for everyone to take a look at that um, in comparison to what you're being presented with, because mm -hmm. um, it breaks down everything in, in detail. And so any changes, obviously, that, that may be recommended for the future, that's Me where the um, revision would occur in the code. But everything is there right now. Yeah, yeah I kind of figured that, but I just yeah. wanted them to know that. Thank you very much, Mr. Attorney. I, don't know I appreciate that. Was that. Updated. Huh? I don't even know if that was updated. It's updated on the website. But Wouldn't that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Miss, uh, Madam Clerk, anything else? No, thank you. No. All right, so, um, so with this, we're going to take this back. We're going to make our notes. We're going to come to the next committee meeting with any comments or any questions. You can also contact the manager in the meantime. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to look back at when um, the, uh, the previous manager was here and if there are raised. Uh, and, and how they were raised, which ones were raised, and how and how much they were raised. Also, um, and, and we'll have the, and we'll come back with that also, because I also want to see that maybe when they were raised with uh, with Rosemary. I remember I remember we raised some things, but I remember it was it it wasn't like it wasn't like 15 things. 
it wasn't like that. There's so a few. yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't like this. It wasn't like a list of this. this is a, these are 26 recommendations. It wasn't like this. Yeah, this is more detailed. So that's what I want to see. Um, and, pl and even the things that were raised, I want to see how they still compare. And, and, and um, because I remember when we were doing things when Roseman was here, um, we were we had been so far behind as a village in so many things. And you know, thanks to the mayor and thanks to individuals like Councilperson Roman, we were playing like catch up. You know what I mean? So we still might be a little bit behind. I mm -hmm. want to see those numbers and kind of see how all that kind of works out. All right. Yeah, so we're, if yeah, go ahead. if um, the manager could please send us maybe the changes that were made so yeah. that we can have those mm -hmm. as oh, we review yeah. um, and compare with this. Yeah, that would be perfect. Absolutely. I'll okay. get that to you as soon as I get that this week. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any, anything else? Or anything? Mm -mm. Any last thing? Okay. All right, moving on. So the next agenda item will be the discussion of um, manager's pay raise, G3. I put this on the agenda item just because you guys, I want to start to bring this up um, because I wanted, first of all, you guys know how I believe that, um, that the work environment, you know, should always be as positive as, po positive as possible. I also believe that um, okay, morale is very important. I also believe that individuals should be should also be treated fairly um, in the workplace and when you know you, they're they're employed by you and I wanted to just kind of like look at this to start the conversation because the manager has been working for us since when, when did you officially I have the, the contract here at the end of August uh, 2017 but I became permanent manager March 2018. Yeah, August 2017, and she became permanent March 2018. Yeah, I have your, I have your contract here. And um, since then, not only has she not received a raise, um, but there's also questions that will be coming down the pipe also that I, I have personally, and that is just about things like, like in, the insurance, questions about like the type of insurance we have like compared to you know um, other options that might be out there you know adding um, you know adding individuals like you know children and things like that um, with different type of insurances but for right now uh, I wanted to first start to have a discussion about possibility of um, you know a future raise for the uh, for the manager. I just wanted to get the committee's input on um, what do you guys kind of think uh, about, you know, her her job, how long she's been here, and uh, and this not even have been um, brought up. And this has been we we've we've talked about in the past um, raises also for other individuals that that uh, that work for us that they go a long time without it getting brought up, and then it gets brought up, and we're like, man, that person hasn't had a raise in years and years, and. I just don't want to get back into that type of situation again, um, so I want to be more proactive as far as uh, putting it on everybody else's radar. Um, Councilperson uh, Urban. Um, so I've been a hourly or even tip earner for most of my life, right? Um, but um, I do believe in a 3% annual raise, at least to keep in place with inflation in, in theory, right? Um, and so um, I'll say, without knowing any further details, I, across the board, do support that for, uh, on an annual basis for anybody um, uh, because of the reality of inflation. And so if we're ahead of it, great, if we're behind it, you know, but that 3% really does make a difference. And so, um, so beyond that, um, I, would, I, would, I would be wanting to have FEMA finalized and other financials within the village solidified, clear, um, to know exactly where we stand in terms of, in terms of anything beyond that. But, but um, uh, certainly I'm, I'm definitely open to, to looking at uh, some sort of raise and then to take a second look at, because I have not seen actually like a benefits package, things like this, whatever that might be. Um, and so um, I'm definitely open to reviewing it, absolutely. Uh, Councilperson Roman. Um, I actually um, agree with much of what Irvom is saying. Um, I I 
I think the time that I've been on this council, for me, it's been very important to have some standards and some procedures. And unfortunately, this council, when it comes to holding those standards and procedures for our staff, the staff that reports to us, we have not been consist consistent or very good at it. And so um, I would like to see that there is an annual for the staff that reports to the council that includes the village manager and the, um, and the clerk, the two positions. Obviously the attorney position, that's different and that's a contracted position. Um, the contract, I worked on the contract for the manager. It states that there will be an annual review, which I think is definitely very important for communication, open communication, um, so that the parties know exactly where they stand. We can set goals and move forward with those goals. We could also take a look at and have discussions about additional races that go beyond the 3%. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have those reviews, then we don't have those opportunities. And so with her coming up with another anniversary, mm -hmm. um, I would think that that should be a part of the procedure that we go through the process of some type of review, mm -hmm. just a, you know, a conversation, but something that goes in writing. And then from there, absolutely the 3% would be my recommendation. <laughs> Go ahead, Councilor Roman. I essentially agree wholeheartedly with Councilor Pusher Roman. And, um, uh, and I think it's important both for our staff as well as for the council. Um, it's a mutually beneficial activity to go through those reviews. And frequently I've seen in all kinds of different businesses where reviews aren't taking place and, uh, you know, Best case scenario is you're losing morale, but worst case scenario is you know you're losing you're other opportunities. So yeah, yeah you're, you're losing good people. Um, let me let me let me just say this. Uh, thank you, Councilperson uh, Roman. Thank you, Councilperson Urbom. Um, so from where we stand right now, it would be that first of all, we would have because you're you're uh, you're you're anniversary is coming up when in March in March okay mm -hmm. which is almost perfect because we're right there we have a committee meeting coming up so okay but we're discussing this and our clerk just had an anniversary yeah and there was no increase yeah there was an increase prior to that which was to bring her up to speed because we had not given her an increase in a long time in a very long time yeah so here we are, we're gonna fall into the same if we're not consistent. Yeah. And I have been on this committee for three years, going on four, and we've not been consistent, and I've been asking for that. So basically what we're saying is, <laughs> is that March is your anniversary coming up, yes. and for your anniversary coming up in March, we want to not only do a review for the manager, correct? Mm -hmm. We also want to, um, before that happens, before the next committee meeting, we want to, uh, as Councilperson Urbom suggested, so that you end, so everybody is up to date on not only your contract, but your benefits package. Mm -hmm. So Councilperson Urbom would, do you believe that, would you like to have that before, before we discuss, correct, before we go into the discussion about how much the raise should be and, and things like that? Do you, you want to see the benefits package and, and go through her, uh, her contract? I mean, I, su I suppose uh, ultimately yes. Um, and I think if uh, this should be possible to accomplish fairly quickly so that out ahead of March uh, committee, we'll be working. more than prepared to. Right. And, I mean, in theory, we will have essentially conducted some manner of review between now and the March committee meeting. Is that correct? Thing about it is for the for the reviews. Okay, so for for different um, for annual reviews, I remember that uh, Councilperson Roman um, 
that we had, uh, you remind me if I'm, if I'm incorrect, but we have for different individuals, we had different, we had a couple different type of uh, review templates. Because I remember for um, we had the, the one for Joe Geller, that was one template. And then we had a different type of template because there was, there was one review thing, there was one review template that we had where you had to kind of like write out, it was questions and it had spaces underneath the questions where we wrote out exactly how we felt. And there, was, there was another type of template where it was, it was boxed and it was checked. We had to like check. And then there was like a couple of questions at the very, very end. My question is, is there a particular, because we still have those templates. If I'm not mistaken, I, when I was the chair of this committee, I sent out the templates. I wrote out what the procedures should be. And I can certainly look to see if we have those. The, the clerk should have them. Yeah. Um, one thing that's also, if we're talking about this and we're talking about giving reviews, one thing that's still pending is the clerk's job description. It's the only job description that is not complete. Um, it's been discussed, it's been sent for review for the committee, um, and nothing's been finalized. So what we'll do um, for the clerk, since the clerk is, if, if it's okay with you, Councilperson Roman, what we'll do in that, in that particular case, um, we will bring that up at the next committee meeting, okay? I mean, she just had her annual I know her, she, yeah. in November, I believe it was. Yeah. So yeah, she just had her annual. Yes. I mean, we want to be consistent. We also want to respect the fact that one of our employees just had an anniversary, and we're going to be moving forward with one that hasn't had the anniversary yet first before as you just moving forward as, 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 as you just stated mm -hmm. we don't even have the job description completed for the clerk i want to tackle that next committee meeting because before because it makes no sense for me to give a review to somebody if i have to have a better understanding about exactly what we're going to be reviewing on. So I want to tackle that first, and then, all right, because I won't time to discuss that, so we're going to do that first. As far as we're clear, before we go to the next agenda item, for the next committee meeting, what we're going to do is, we're going to have everybody receive the mayor's contract, no, I mean the manager's contract, everybody receive the, um, Everybody received the manager's, uh, her benefits package, which is part of it. And um, we will come back here, and at that particular time, we will have ideas about what we feel about the raise and how we go forward on that. But before we get to that, Councilperson Roman, if you, if you will, um, could you email the clerk those two templates? just in case, um, just so she has them, uh, she can have them right there in front of her. And since we've used both templates in the past in order to save time on this, so we don't have to come back here and decide what template, we'll have the clerk email us both templates and whatever template you feel is the one you want to use, we'll have it that way and we'll bring those reviews back here, and we'll go over the reviews at the next committee meeting. Pardon me, Chair, but I do yes. believe that we should be consistent in terms of the template that we use. We shouldn't have two different templates the, depending on who likes which one. The reason why I said that was because I remember using both templates, mm -hmm. and I remember that on both templates, both templates, the majority of the, um, the questions, the information is exactly the same. It's just laid out in a different way. Okay, the template that was put together 
was taken from those two templates and it was combined. So that it, all the information is on there. So I will send that over okay. to the clerk and I'll have you guys look at it. I'll have, you know, have her send it to you guys so that you can look at it. But that should be sufficient because what we're, it makes no sense to use two different templates and then you're going to be going back to square one when we've been at this for three years. The problem is, is that if we have one, if you have the, if we have the one template where both templates are in the one template, that's perfectly fine. All I know is I remember using one template for one review and using a different template for another review? There are different for the clerk. The clerk has one template and the manager has one template. If that's probably. That's, that, that, would, that wasn't, because we have one. Because there are two different positions. So the way that they're reviewed are two different ways. We had one used for the, um, the attorney, Joe Geller. We had a different template for Joe Geller. I remember it. Correct, because he's an attorney. That was an attorney that was focused on what the attorney does. That, that's, that's not correct, that's not correct because it was, a, it was a general template that we use for the attorney. But if we have, if you have, we can use that one template that we have, if you email her that one template, I'll we'll use that one what template. I have. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Councilperson Irvon. Um, I'm looking at uh, Muni Code here. In chapter one of the charter, article three, the Village manager has three essentially uh, little sections. So section 3.01, village manager, quick definition. 3.02, appointment, removal, compensation in there. And then uh, 3.03 is powers and duties. So in terms of job description, it's there in the charter for the manager. Um, and then uh, uh, 3.02 here, appointment, removal, and compensation, one paragraph uh, essentially assigns that uh, it is entirely up to the council to, to uh, to manufacture our own review process. Mm -hmm. And it essentially says the same for the clerk. So if we were gonna add job description for the clerk, it'd be, uh, uh, the attorney certainly would correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, it looks like we'd be um, just adding another uh, subsection below the clerk in, in Article Three of the, ad, of the administrative part of the charter. So I think at least in terms of the code, again, the attorney would correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, it does seem that we have fairly clear free license to kind of reinvent the wheel if we get to that point where we need to. So, um, but I, I certainly, it certainly sounds like we have the framework of what we already need, so. Thank you very much, Councilperson Irvon. Councilperson Roman? That's it. Mr. Manager? I mean, Mr. Attorney? No. no. Madam Clerk? No. Madam Manager? Yes. Yes, yes I do. Um, I appreciate um, everyone's concerns and, and your <laughs> issues regarding the evaluation. Uh, this time last year, I re requested um, a pay increase per my uh, contract that does state in section four that uh, for the first year, I was um, to be considered for an increase of 5% and um, for the first full year of employment. And um, when I raised this issue last year, we were going through some financial turmoil and it was dismissed as we need to address those issues first. I understand uh, our financial state. In fact, our uh, interim CFO is here to discuss that further, you know, um, further in the um, agenda. But I, you know, here we are coming up on my second anniversary that would call for a, an increase of 3%. So, you know, I don't want to be lost in the, in the fray. I know Councilperson Roman did give me a review. Um, I, don't, I don't recall seeing anybody else's review last year. Um, because we've started the process, but then it was shut down because of the, the I think because of our financial situation. Um, I, I pray that you will look at it and really, you know, I don't want it to be lost in a situation uh, with someone else. I'm an, a manager, you know, I'm different from a clerk. Mm -hmm. I would like to be considered, you know, as you all have, you know, my description, my contract, my templates, whatever you need. So um, I ask that you just consider that this is, year two, and yeah. I would like a raise. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Manager. Anybody else, any last words? Thank you very much. Moving on to the next agenda item. Um, enterprise leasing fleet discussion. Enterprise, 
cars. <laughs> I just I, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Chairman Nickerson. Uh, you all got a, a document. We met with Enterprise uh, Leasing to discuss fleet management. Uh, as you all know, we have a, uh, a graveyard over here on the right side of the building, on the east side of the building, for old and beat up cars, some donated, some our own. Uh, we did uh, have the benefit and, and blessing of, uh, of buying five uh, police vehicles back in 2017. Um, but those cars need, are starting to come on, they're becoming older, and the cars that we have already are old. So we've been spending up a lot of money on repairs, and it has gotten to a point where I feel like we, need, we have to do something fast. Um, we are going through our allotment of 15000 for maintenance, and we're only in um, uh, January, we have to get through the rest of the fiscal year with some very old uh, vehicles. The take-home car issue is not the issue here. It's more of just older vehicles needing constant repair. I've gotten uh, a number of emails from our um, Lieutenant Mendez, who is actually the fleet manager, and uh, also from uh, Chief Magnuson, uh, who have... Uh, they understand our financial situation and that we have not budgeted for these things. However, um, they have been trying to just work with what we have. We've uh, repaired electrical, mechanical, air conditioned brakes, emergency equipment, fuel vapors, overheating, host of other things. And as you know, the code enforcement uh, vehicle has pretty much died. And, and uh, we were looking into leasing. I talked to Enterprise about that as well. It's a, I was trying to find a cheaper uh, fix for a shorter, you know, term, time frame, but um, I don't think this is something we can uh, hold off on. So I really, you know, we've done repairs. I've just spent six, almost six thousand dollars in repairs this month in cars. I think that can save us, hold us over for a, a few more months. But we we still have these things coming up, and I understand like a, an enterprise would be, um, you know, in the short term. Yes, it looks hefty because that's twenty two thousand dollars but we allot it fifteen thousand for maintenance so i'm looking to the future and not having cars breaking down and, and um and unusable when we have officers who need their vehicles um that we consider uh, doing the fleet management and that we roll in new vehicles maintain the 2017 vehicles um because and by the way those I'm sorry, I got this paperwork here. The Ford Taurus's warranties will end May 2020. So that five years went quickly, or that you know, four-year warranty went very fast. Um, so we want to keep the 2017s, but buy um, uh, new vehicle or lease new vehicles from Enterprise. They've given us uh, the breakdown of the pricing. Uh, it will come out to be about 22,000 a year. Uh, if you add those um, vehicles that were requested, uh, what we could do is utilize the 2017s for reserve and part-timers uh, while the um, full-time and more senior staff get the newer vehicles. Uh, Enterprise's program is that as cars are retired every three years, because they handle all of the maintenance, the repairs, everything, that's all built into the cost, so we don't have to do a thing except wash it. And um, they buy back the parts or uh, sell the vehicle as a used car and then we utilize those funds to get the next vehicle so it's a rotation that um, many other um, jurisdictions are utilizing um, it's uh, Biscayne Park uh, I'm sorry I have a list here of all of the jurisdictions that are using this um, but it, it seems to be a good program and I I ask that you um, look at it um, consider it Sweetwater is using it um, and, and a myriad of others. I, I just don't have all the list on me right now. But um, we, we have to do something with the fleet. And, and the graveyard of, of vehicles is not the way to go. We've had five uh, cars donated to us that we cannot use, but they're sitting over there, um, just taking up space. We could sell them to a junkyard for $250 each, but I think we get a better price if we do the enterprise program. They will do um, an equity analysis for us for those vehicles. And um, they have done kind of a draft of it that would give us uh, some money back that would be helpful to utilize if we use the program. They, that would 
we could use that to buy vehicles through them. So I ask that you just look at it, think about this, because we have to, we're going to be coming up on the time when we need to do something. And I do need to get that code enforcement vehicle replaced. Okay. House President Irvine. All right. Um, so the, um, Madam Manager, the uh, list that you sent us for comparison is, uh, I do see a four-door vehicle in there as I looked at it earlier today, but, but I mean, to me, it just seemed like obviously the one in the middle there, the truck, seems like a no-brainer. My question, though, is beyond public works, the immediate need of that truck, code enforcement, the immediate need of that car, are there any other vehicles that are prohibiting any other officers or uh, staff to, to, to function properly? Or what, what other critical situations are we in with vehicles? Officer Lopez has a, I don't have the year of this vehicle. He has a Ford Crown Victoria that is quite old and a little beat up, um, or a lot beat up. Um, so that's one that we've had repaired a few times. Um, he's became a full-time officer and we had to, because we have one, one, two, three, four, five. We have one, two, three. So we have four old vehicles being used by full-timers that are take-home vehicles. So those four are, you know, in our sights. Any vehicle that's 2014 and older needs, to be, okay. needs to be rolled out of uh, service. But we, right now we just, we aren't in a position to, to do that. But I, I ask that we consider when while budgeting um, for next year especially, um, that instead of utilizing the 15,000 for just keeping up with repairs that are just, you know, and which we've almost gone through already, that we maybe reallocate some funds so that we can maybe do a program. Okay. And then, um, uh, so as I'm looking at the one, it looks like the no-brainer in terms of the work truck, right? Uh, 20, it's a 2020, so yes. my concern at that point becomes what penalties are we facing when we turn that vehicle back in and it's no longer looking like a 20, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's going to use for public works, so that the truck is going to get used. The and we can't, so... Okay, if I may, yes. Um, the program for all of the vehicles through Enterprises that they only they are retired after three years, okay. so there is no penalty. Then they sell it as a used vehicle, but we would then have to get a new, you know, go back into the program. But we utilize the funds they pay. It's a three-year lease, yes, right? So, it's a three-year lease, so and then we just keep doing three-year lease. So in terms of penalties of things like mileage and damage, though. Well, damage, I, that would be something we have to look into, right. but mileage that, is not. For public works and thinking dense dings, I mean, again, on a shiny new truck already, every single ding is going to stand out. And I worked in the car business twice, and I, might, I just have the concern of, of what's going to happen when we turn that vehicle in in terms of surprises. But okay. on the face of it, um, Looks well, like we could certainly discuss that more with Enterprise. Um, okay. They would maintain it, so they would handle all repairs as okay. part of the package. But I would will ask about: Is there a penalty if it's brought back in below standard, you know, condition or, or what have you? I'll okay. I'll get more information about that and share it with you all. Thank you, Councilperson Rome. So the total, um, the number of vehicles that we need is four. No, we need more than that. Four is what uh, is being utilized, old vehicles being utilized by full-time okay, police. Okay, so how many vehicles are you looking to put into this program, mm. ideally? We need to start with at least uh, eight. Okay. Eight for police, and then we need the two for uh, the administration. Okay, and then when, um, what are, what's your time frame? when we're able to do it financially <laughs> but um no I, uh, as soon as would you like I would like if we could stagger it in I, I would like to meet with enterprise more and see how we can you know because if we can do it in stages that would be a little more palatable but um I would like to do four initially and then the four the next four later and uh, I'll see what they are if they're able to do that with us um, so. okay so when you say four initially are you looking at four initially bef you know during this budget season are you looking at four for the next budget? That's what I'm looking for. Yes, I don't, I don't know yet. I, it depends on what I can find through in our budget for that because we have some other expenses. So I would like to do four in this budget, but if we aren't able to, then it would have to be next next budget year. Thank you. Okay, and then do you know the total um, 
I see monthly payments here, yes. but do you know the total for those eight or those four? It depends per on month? what. Yes, well, it's on the list and it depends on what we choose. These are just some round ideas. I asked them just to give me some, you know, a car, a truck, a, you know, a police car. So we have a, I think there's a charger on here or some, uh, a Durango. Um, the Sierra, the sedan is a charger. So he gave me some different ideas. We can get even more detailed than that. I just wanted you all to have a roundabout idea. But the lease payments if, are in the first line of yellow, and those are the monthly payments. So we added those up um, and you know multiplied them, and it came out to be, uh, I think if we did the cheapest, which would be 288 a month, Per vehicle, or I'm sorry, this is a. If we did the truck, then it would be 288 a month, and I multiply that by eight or what have you, and then we would have the price. But it depends on what we choose, so I, that's why I don't know exactly because not all of the vehicles are, are going to be the same. 288 and is what number? Because I don't now, see that number. Here. Do you have the closed in walk away lease quote uh, document? Do you have this document? I probably didn't print that one. Okay, I can hand it to you. But it, it gives a breakdown. Also, it has to be equipped, so it, the prices are a little less or a little more if it has to have like the police bar as opposed to the, the public works or, or the code enforcement car wouldn't have to have those things on. Mm -hmm. This is not an all-encompassing breakdown, but I, I'm just giving you an idea about where we're going to start. Oh, and, and how it's going to be, but it will be a little bit more depending on what the vehicle will be. I mean, I think for me, yeah. I like to see the numbers mm -hmm. yeah. and, and what, what you're proposing. Um, and then we need to figure out, you know, where is it, where's that going to come from? Is it going to be this budget season? Is it, are we going to budget it for next year or what we're going to do? Um, this doesn't really tell me much. So I like to see totals. Okay. Um, Madam Manager, for the, when, when it comes to the police cars, uh, we do this process, do they equip the police cars or do we get it from them, we lease from them and then we take it to where we get them equipped? They would equip them. They would equip them? Yes. Okay. And do they do, they, um, is it fully equipped, like they do all the, the yes. decals and, yes. and everything? Okay. Right. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, Councilperson Urban, anything last you want to say? I mean, the only last thing I have is that I like for, I mean, I think I expressed it during the last council meeting. I think the um, public works and the code enforcement vehicles are definitely a priority um, because those vehicles are basically non-functional and we want to make sure that we keep the morale of our employees and you know, we, we do have some great staff at this moment or we're hiring new. So we don't want to hire a new person into yeah. Yeah, a job yeah. that he can't perform because he doesn't have a vehicle. Yeah. So I would say that that would be the, pr I like to see that as a priority um, as soon as possible. Um, and then the totals of what it will look like, how many vehicles, you know, if we did four, how much, what would that look like? If we did eight, what would that look like? What are, I really don't care what type of vehicle it is. I just like to see the numbers. And so, um, so I definitely want to see uh, just with the police cars, with the fully equipped, um, just the, the end price of, of each uh, of, of each of each thing. You know, whether it's a charger or whatever. I just want to see the end price as far as fully equipped, because I don't I don't know if they're um, how much extra it is to equip, because it takes a lot to equip a police car. You know, um, with everything on it and decals and everything. So. So uh, I, def I definitely want to just want to see that. Um, yes, if you look at the um, vehicle comparison uh, mm -hmm. chart that I gave you, they do say patrol unit, and they give you mm -hmm. some yeah. sizes and uh, and what have mm -hmm. you. And the total monthly payment six hundred and fifty five dollars and sixty two cents a month. Lease term sixty months if they hold it for five years. Uh, the equity at the end of the term would be a nine. Thousand, so they break it down like that. Right. It just depends on the vehicle. Um, the other thing that Enterprise stated to me is that they can't. They get the vehicles at wholesale. They're passing that price to us, not the you know marked up price. price. And um, it, it again depends on what we get. Um, 
the immediate need is the code enforcement car and the um, and the public works truck. Um, there was a truck that was made available uh, just this week that we could not afford, so we didn't get it. It was $17,000. Because I needed to know more about where we stand financially, I don't want to jump on something that, you know, I don't know where that money would come from. Um, the enterprise um, management, fleet management gets cars all the time, so they're always coming in. So it may not, it just depends on what they have. So I will go back and see what, uh, you know, what funds we have. We really need to identify that first and then try to work with them in terms of trying to get a little bit less. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't need to be a uh, 2000 or 2020 charger for code enforcement, but I, he needs to give me more options. So I will work on that and get that to information to you all as well. Um, Councilperson Roman, I remember we spoke about um, possibly renting mm -hmm. uh, cars for the, uh, for the code enforcement or public, because the public works truck is like out, out. No, right. but the public works truck um, still functions. The code enforcement, the code enforcement car. car is like out, out. Yes. Okay. Um, we really need to look into uh, renting. Uh, well, if I may, um, we are now using one of the donated vehicles. Okay. It's not in be the best shape. Uh, it's one, um, it's, we're having some problems with that too. So we're at the point where we're, uh, it's at Goodyear now, uh, doing a diagnostic, $75 to tell us what exactly it's gonna cost to get it up to speed. I, I wanna see just what it will cost and if it's something that we can do just to put on a Band-Aid until we can figure this out with Enterprise about the car, um, a, a cheaper car, you know, a, a process, then, then I'll do that. But I'll, I'll know that hopefully this week in terms of them fixing the, one of the donated cars up enough for a, us to utilize it in the short term. Do they have to be 2020s? Can they be, do they have two 2019s? That no, they, they told me they don't do, it has to be like a 2020 and then they rotate or it out. 2021. Yes. Right. Um, Councilperson Urbom, Councilperson uh, Roman, how do you, what, what do you guys think about um, possibly starting this process with, with the code enforcement car? And, and, and seeing how, seeing how the, the program does. I don't, I don't see a through problem the, through with the it. We just figure card. out where, we we get, we, where we're gonna fund it. Where we're gonna fund it, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I mean, if the manager money. can propose but, where she's gonna get yeah. the money from. But we can, I, we can, you know, if we, she can start to look into that for, for at least that one. Correct. That one vehicle, the code enforcement, mm -hmm. if it's down and we need it anyway, and we're looking into this program, you know, and in theory, it will be the lowest cost vehicle. It, that's what I'm saying yeah. because it doesn't need to be equipped like a police car. So I think it might be a. So we just start looking into that and. Okay, I'll work on that and get information to you right. this week. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilperson Urban, anything else? Councilperson Rome. Uh, Mr. Attorney. No. Okay. Madam Clerk, and Madam Manager, anything you want to add? No. All right. Thank you very much, you guys. Moving on, the um, next item is the uh, closeout cost for uh, Hurricane Wilma. Um, yes, I received a letter from the um, Florida Division of Emergency Management uh, this week. Actually, the letter is dated uh, some time ago, but I got it beginning of, of January which states that on the front of the page. I did send this document to you all. Um, as you know, we uh, were obligated funds from our Hurricane Irma recovery. And um, from those obligated funds, $165,034.92, um, I'm sorry, I misspoke. In, during Hurricane Wilma, the village of El Portal, or the recovery of uh, Hurricane Wilma, the village of El Portal received funds uh, for um, reimbursement. Uh, according to um, the federal government and FDEM, we were overpaid uh, in the amount of $165,034.92. So from that, the village was to pay this money back. Um, I don't know what happened years ago, but we didn't pay the money back. So when we were obligated funds uh, from Hurricane Irma recovery, those funds were taken from 
the, the owed funds were taken from our obligated funds. But there is a, still a balance owing of $6,807.02. I, I really wanted you all to just be aware of this and to know that this is the closeout of the um, Wilma um, debt, and it is $6,800. So we, you know, I, I understand we need to go through our own process with Hurricane Irma and, and some other things. It's not an immediate thing that's on our necks, but be aware that this is a, a big chunk that we will have to pay back. And, and um, I want, when we discuss some things with our uh, interim CFO, we will have to try to identify where we're gonna um, get this money so that we can return it um, back to FDE. Councilperson, um, Councilperson uh, Roman. Do we have any documentation from previous years from when this happened that <clears throat> states that we owe this money? I don't have anything from there. I just have the letters that I've received. Um, I was told this was a debt that was owed from, I guess, when was it, Irma 2012 or um, Hurricane Wilma? Um, so no, I don't have any documentation from that. I have been told by um, our previous CFO that, that we did owe money, but he didn't have any documents for it and he didn't pay it. But, and that's Erwin Williams, but I never have received or I've never seen anything from, from those files or from that time. And the clerk doesn't have any documentation that was received on that? On the no. From 2012? No, I wasn't even here. No, no, I don't have anything. Wilma was like 07. Yeah, Wilma. It may have been 07. Yeah, Wilma was a long time ago, before any of us were yeah. here. So, no further questions. Yeah, yeah. I have, Councilperson. I have, one, I have one a very significant question, and that is, uh, that is as we are anticipating uh, reimbursement for Irma, is there going to be any expectation of any funds that would need to be held, essentially in escrow is what it sounds like, to know for any specific period of time that we would not need to return any of the monies from, a fee from this FEMA? If it happened once before from FEMA, from a hurricane, then we certainly need some answers um, on what to expect when we do receive that reimbursement in terms of if there's a period that FEMA has, for example, for back from Wilma, was there would be we would want to know if there's any communication that they gave us a heads up that there would be a period of review what have you that we would need to be hold on to those monies until it fully clears and then uh, I have the exact same question for any communication coming from FEMA regarding Irma uh, I guess that would be to either the manager or the clerk but or even the attorney I suppose but I can only say I, no I don't know I don't know that we would want to hold monies in case they want to recapture them. I'm assuming through the rigorous um, review we're going through that if they release those funds that they are due to us. Well, I mean, I guess I'm not fully comfortable with just accepting that $160,000 is left on the table that we either didn't know about or didn't, uh, weren't prepared for, what have you. I mean. It sounds fortunate that they were able to get us down to the 6,000, right, because of funds that are already coming or at least obligated for us, right? Mm -hmm. However, I don't see that as a, I just don't see that as a, any kind of a win. It's still $160,000 that we are not going to be able to utilize in whichever fiscal year this reimbursement does come to us. Um, and so, uh, and so I'm very cautious now. Uh, and, and concerned to know that we are fully uh, informed as to, as to what we could expect in terms of something like this uh, regarding Irma. Thank you, Madam Manager, for bringing this to our attention and on staying up on this. And, uh, um, could we ask FEMA to provide us with the documentation that they sent us from 2005 or 2006 regarding this? I can request it. I will. Yeah, we'd want to try and track down who our liaison was at that time, if possible, with office. And really, I mean, that's going to, but I, I, I certainly think it's worth breaking a sweat over getting as many details as possible on this one. Breaking uh, a big sweat. And do they specifically say that, that 
we um, we erred in a particular. Do you like give the details about like if it was a the, like if it was our error if it was. Madam Mayor, how are you doing? This is our mayor, everybody. I just want to I just want to add um, to that. So we were first notified that we owed for Wilma. Wilma was in 2005. David Rosen was the exiting manager at the time. We were advised literally in the summer of 17, right when the, our current manager was coming in, and we got hit with Irma. So there is a whole slew of an email with all of the backup documentation that you're asking for. It was not a mistake that the village did at the time. And I want to say the manager at 05, Steve Alexander, Jason, I don't think it was Jason Walker, because I think Jason Walker started at 07. I started in 08. Mm -hmm. Um, but there is an email that was sent to David Roseman. I don't know who has David Roseman's email right now, the former manager, but there's an extensive email that it's clearly states exactly what happened and why that was owed. And then they left us alone because we got hit with, everybody got hit with Irma. And then we were kindly reminded again, right when sort of like all of the craziness ended with Irma that we needed to get this paid. And then they automatically just started taking the money as it got obligated to us. Um, and for Councilperson Urban, your concern, uh, since 05, we weren't the only city that had to return money. So they've changed the entire process of how they operate and their system. Not sure if it's better or worse, but they did change it based on what they found after um, Hurricane Elmer, because a lot of money was dispersed back then. So I don't know if that helps it. Yeah. No, that, no, absolutely. It Thank does. you, Madam Mayor. And um, the reason why I asked that was because for the same reason I think, uh, Councilperson Urbom, your concern, you know, whatever happened back then, I just didn't, you know, I, I wanted, didn't want us to make the same mistake this time. It might be like a little oversight or a little, you know, clerical error or something that might happen that we could look out for this time. But, you know, as the mayor said, if they change the process, um, and there's emails that detail exactly um, what the problem was, we just need to take a look at that. So. Well, I'll, I'll try to track down those emails and share that with the committee as well. But, uh, it's good for you all to know this is yeah. something that's going to come up. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Councilperson Irvo. Yeah. Councilperson Roman. Yeah. Mr. Attorney. Madam Clerk. Yeah. Madam Manager. Yeah. No? Okay. Um, moving right along, you guys. The uh, the status of the El Portal, uh Council vacancy. Um, the clerk, Madam Clerk, as far as um, you and your, your discussions that you've been having with the, um, with the elections department, like, can you just give us some, like, some general information, um, what they've been uh, discussing with you? As far as it goes, um, from the recommendation from the attorney to piggyback on the um, primaries, we cannot, we've missed that deadline already. Okay. Um, they advised me that there's state laws and there um, that need to be interpreted by the attorney regarding when we can have this election and also um, deadlines that are needed to be made. Okay. And the charter, obviously. Mr. Attorney, you yeah, want maybe I can clarify okay. a little bit more. Um, we've been through this before. You may recall um, about a year or so ago we went through this. Our chart is pretty specific as to the timetable. It states simply that you can have the special election um, no sooner than 30 days after the vacancy mm -hmm. or no later than 90 days. So if we're looking at the outside 90-day period under our charter, the special election process would have to be completed by March 18th. 2020. Um, that's our charter, obviously. However, we're still having to deal with the supervisor of elections timetables to comply with the notice requirements for um, conducting general elections or special elections. So the, what we are at the process of doing now is going back to the supervisor and say, look, this is what our charter says. This is our outside date to conduct the special election process tell us whether you can do it or not, um, given the advertisement guidelines and also given the fact that there's also primary election coming up um, 
in between the time period I just mentioned, not to mention the cost factor. Um, if you may recall, the last time we had to do a special election, the first step is just doing that, tell them what, telling the um, supervisor what our timetable period is, and then they prepare an agreement which comes back to you all with a proposed resolution to set the qualifying dates and also the um, uh, special election date and, if necessary, a runoff date. So between now and I would say next week, we should get that information and I've already prepared a proposed resolution that we can discuss at next week's meeting concerning um, trying to select those dates if they fit in line with um, cost and the timetable that the supervisor will provide us. Mr. Mr. Tony, let me ask you, uh, you a quick question. As far as the timetable according to the 30 days, 90 days, and then the, the election department, if everything's decided by next week, do we still have time to open it up? Do we still have time to open it that's, up, you know, uh, file the paperwork? That's, um, that's exactly what we'd have to discuss. I mean, obviously the first step is to give the supervisor of elections our charter provision. Say, look, this is what our charter says. Then the supervisor will have to come back and tell the clerk or my office, okay, given that parameter, can we advertise, prepare the ballots, you know, get everything prepared within that period of time to conduct a special election? Um, so we won't know that until they tell us. Now, I guess the obvious question is, is if they tell us a date that doesn't coincide with our charter and um, it, what happens at that point? And I can tell you right now, we'd have to research that. Um, because, you know, our charter is not prescriptive. It says shall. Um, but we are not able to conduct a special election within our administrative um, processes. We have to rely upon the supervisor of election. So I'm sure there's got to be case law out there that I can look at to see what happens if the supervisor of election comes back and says as soon as we can actually conduct your special election, um, given the notice requirements and given what, um, you know, they have to do to get ready for it. If it's outside that time period, we'd have to. Councilperson Rome. Councilperson Irma. So uh, when this all happened, I, my initial thought was, um, I mean, my initial thought was whatever could be possible to accommodate a special election should be made simply by prescription of the charter, right? Um, and so uh, it sounds it sounds like a monumental task to pull this off by March 18th. Now, does, are we saying March 18th to account for a possible runoff as well? Or the- yeah. so Everything has to be completed within the 90 days. So that would include the special election date. So essentially, you're looking at actually a week before, maybe two weeks before that deadline. Do we know what, this is the date of removal, is that right? The date of removal was December 19th. It was December 19th. 2019. Okay. okay. Um, and so, uh, so I guess I'm very curious to hear what, uh, what case law might be, it sounds like. So, yeah. I, okay. think the, I think the, and that's, that's correct, but I think the first thing is, is let's see what the supervisor says once we give him, um, give her that, um, our, our charter requirement. It's the same thing that happened the last time when we dealt with the resignation. It was actually a little, maybe it was in January, I think the last time we dealt with it. Um, so we'll see what, she, see what she says. And so then would that uh, come directly from you to the committee by yeah, well, email? Well, actually it, it's gonna be, it's gonna come in the form of a res, uh, resolution. Okay. So um, hopefully between now and the end of the week we'll hear back from them to let, you know, to advise us as to whether or not it's even something that's feasible. Um, so if it is feasible, we're looking at one, if not a series of special uh, meetings, committee well, meetings? It would only just be, just be it, would, it would come straight to the, the council, council meeting. meeting. Right. It would be simply a proposed resolution that would say that the council, um, you know. Okay, gotcha. With the qualifying with date, the uh, yeah. election, the, uh, the special election date, and then a third date for, um, a runoff if necessary. So we anticipate having guidance and even a resolution by the general counsel meeting? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think you know, the last thing too is, um, is, as I mentioned, just to be complete, you know, that might be the easy part because the 
The flip side of it is that we're actually contracting with the supervisor to conduct the elections, and that comes with, as we've been discussing, a, a cost. I think the last time it was about $15,000, uh, almost $17,000 to conduct um, the special election. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Attorney. We can definitely uh, stay on top of the, uh, you know, to try to get that, that information by, uh, by next week. We appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, I will call them for an update tomorrow again, but being at that the primary is March 19th, all the resources are being used. So March 18 is not looking like it either. Plus there's so many other, that's why they said you gotta go back to the state law and be interpreted by the attorney. If, and they also told me that their attorney is available so they can speak amongst them because this is very time sensitive. There might, we might have to look at other options. So in the meantime, I think we should start looking at other options. Um, I agree and not wait for them to get back to us, just to anticipate what's going to be happening. Because I think the percentage of it taking place beforehand is very low. Agreed. So I think that we need to look at what our other option is. So we'll definitely discuss this at the uh, full council. And if that other know. option in any way will allow us to avoid another election this year. I think that that's certainly something we need to look at, having the fact that we're going to have an election in November. Mm -hmm. yeah. Madam Clerk, anything else? I just think that you have to go back and look at the charter and see what it mandates. Yeah. Just read it again. Which mm -hmm. is what I just did. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but there's other, like, the, under the charter, there's different many other sections. Just. Uh, Councilperson Arpaugh. Uh, for the attorney, um, uh, in terms of alternatives, uh, which body would be dictating what our alternative options would, would be? Well, I mean, as I said, it starts with the charter. The charter mandates it in 90 days. Um, I have not gone to the next step of looking at what if the, um, the supervisor says we can't make that date. I mean, I obviously my first call would be the, to the um, governor's um, general counsel's office to get some guidance on this. Okay. Um, you know, and then yeah. and then if the uh, election supervisor comes back and says we can make the, at least from their end we can make this date. Are we then at that point essentially beholden to pull that off? Well, the. According to our charter, we have to fill the vacancy. It's not, as I mentioned before, it's not something that's a recommendation. Um, once, you know, as, in our charter, the section that's applicable, um, it includes a removal of a council person as creating the vacancy. So, um, you know, we, we've looked at, you know, generally whether or not, you know, the, the governor can appoint, can't. Um, you know, looked at you know those other areas. The governor doesn't make appointments in that regard. Um, so, you know, to answer your question, if the supervisor of elections can um, advise us that it can be done within a time period, we're pretty much stuck doing it based upon our charter. And and I should also note because um, it's all, uh, important to to put this on the record, um, just what recently happened in Broward. You know, if there is a um, exoneration of um, our former council, well, Councilman Mathis, um, he's entitled to a seat back also. So that's also something that you keep in mind. Thank you, ma'am. I mean, Mr. Uh, Mr. Attorney, thank you very much. Um, Councilperson Irma, anything else? <coughs> Councilperson Roman? Madam Clerk? No, when I get a response, um, he's going to send me the date that we're looking at so I can forward it to the Supervisor of Elections, and then I can copy all of you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Attorney, anything else? I, I have one, ahead, one final question for the attorney. Um, okay, in the event that we have a resolution to, it sounds like to potentially tweak the charter to account for this specific, this specific. It, we can't do that. Right. Um, the, to tweak the charter, and I think we tried to tweak it sometime last year, mm -hmm. 
to take this into account and, and to give the um, council the authority to make an appointment, but that didn't um, get out of committee. Um, in order to change the provisions in the charter, we would simply have to um, go through the ordinance process uh, and then prepare the right. ballot question. And then the two and, public meetings and... And then the, yeah. um, the electorate would have to vote to change sure. the charter to, to go through that. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that would a not... a whole other election. Right, okay. that would not be gotcha. something... I got you, okay. Right, ...that you'd be able to do. Yeah. Um, and I think I had one more question. Mm -hmm. If I can get it in five seconds here, I'll ask it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll move good, on. Good. <laughs> Take your time. Uh, Let me get the rest of the night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I've, I've lost it. It'll come back later. We'll talk. Well, I'm sure we'll be. Oh, uh, no, forget it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. And, um, and I do remember um, that item that came forward. But like you said, um, I if I recall, that item also, even if it were passed, it would have to go to be voted on. Um, so it still wouldn't have been voted on to this point. There still wouldn't have been an election. It, I don't remember the timing of it. It would have been on the ballot for the yeah, last no. general election. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I remember, if I remember correctly, because I remember I, I wrote it out in my notes mm -hmm. when I was considering it, and that's why I wanted to talk about it even more, because I was like, it wouldn't have been able to make the next, mm -hmm. um, the next, the next election. Yeah, I remember specifically. But thank you, thank you for that, and uh, hopefully, you know, by, uh, by Tuesday's meeting, uh, we'll be able to have a lot, a lot of new information to discuss. <laughs> thank you very much for that. Um, Councilperson yeah. Roman, anything else? I, it was a comment, that's why I couldn't remember. It wasn't a question, it was a comment. But um, uh, part of it, I think, is the timing. December 19th, we essentially lost 30 days simply because of the holiday and the timing. So, um, so in terms of considering whatever impact a resolution might have on any future, I mean, this situation is simply worse than perhaps it might have otherwise been if for nothing other than the timing around the holiday. Thank you, Councilperson Irwin. Councilperson Irwin, anything else? No. Councilperson Roman. No. Uh, Mr. Manager, I mean, Mr. Attorney, anything else you'd like to add? No. Madam Clerk and Madam Manager. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, how's everybody doing? We have a whole bunch of people waiting for uh, the next meeting. <laughs> We're going to uh, move things on. So you guys, for the... Um, for the tracking report, I think last time we had the uh, committee meeting, Councilperson Roman, I have the tracking report I was using. But remember, I think I told you that I was going to bring in the tracking report that, tracking report that you were previously using um, so that we can start to take things off of that to add it to the tracking report that I was uh, currently using. And so what I'm going to do, um, for sake of time, because the tracking report takes a long time, <laughs> if it's OK with, because we still need our CFO to uh, go over quickly our budget. Um, if it's okay with the council, with the committee, uh, can we do the tracking report uh, next committee meeting? And then um, we'll do the CFO now, and then we can get to the next meeting. So all of our visitors <laughs> who are out there patiently waiting, we appreciate it. Um, so we can get to you guys. If that would require a motion, I'd make a motion to table this uh, the uh, tracking report till next meeting. Correct. Do I have a second? Thank you very much. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, moving along to our CFO. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. This weather's great. I like the change. Uh, Beautiful weather. Yeah. Um, good evening, Chris Wallace, uh, interim CFO for the village. You have two reports uh, in front of you. One's for the fiscal year that ended September 30th, 2019, or fiscal year 19, and the other is for the quarter that ended December 31st, 2019, which is part of fiscal year 20. So just some caveats. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time trying to close out the books, get things caught up, but it's been, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't say a challenge, just a lot of work. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, we don't think there's going to be too many changes at this time to the uh, 2019 report. So each, each package of the reports are the same. There's a summary and then there's the detail for each line item of your general fund budget. It looks as though at this point in time that uh, uh, you probably will finish last year 
um, with maybe sixty to eighty thousand dollars in that range in the black. Um, that's not a big variance. A couple of uh, year in entries could wipe that out, or could be added to it to make it larger. I'm not really familiar with your your city, uh, having only been here since the end of November, but. Um, you know, we are experienced with, uh, with many cities and we've tried to pick up as much as we can. You don't have a lot of, of breadth, so it's, it's easy in that regard. Um, so we've looked it over, nothing really stands out. I mean, you are challenged, of course, with the FEMA money. You were expecting reimbursements last year and the payoff alone last year. Uh, that may not even happen this year. So those revenues and expenses kind of wash each other out. Um, it is, uh, you, are, you are in a negative fund equity position on your general fund, and that, that's because of Hurricane Irma. Uh, it will take you, if you don't get the hurricane money back, which I would expect you to, as you noted, uh, sometimes that can take a very long time. And things did change. When Hurricane Wilma came around, they would quickly advance your money based upon some initial documentation, but they would still come back and audit you and require documentation and a lot of cities wound up owing quite a bit of money after that and they didn't have it so well uh, fema takes it back over time sometimes and that's what's happened to you and then when they take their money back the state takes their portion back which is the most recent letter you got so you're really dealing with two agencies you are a sub grantee of the state of florida the money flows down from the federal government to the state and then to the localities and the state of Florida uh, tends to match that between 75 and 90 percent for administrative costs. Um, and that's what they're asking back, their share of that money that was related to the federal money. Um, because of that, now you're, you've gone the other way like it was during Hurricane Andrew, where you get your documentation together and then they uh, beat your brains out for several months while you try to document it and fight for the reimbursement of the money you, you had to lay out. And of course, that was a significant amount of money. It doesn't take uh, uh, even, you know, that was, really wasn't a bad storm. Uh, it started off as a really bad storm, but it did not, you know, it did not hit South Florida the way uh, most people had, had thought it would. But debris cleanup is expensive um, and it's time consuming. And you, used, you had to use all your money basically to, uh, to get it cleaned up, which I understand you did in, in pretty good order. So it'll take a while. I don't know what to tell you as far as what to expect uh, when you get the money back from, from FEMA and from the state. Um, hopefully you will. Uh, I always tell people you can't really count on the timing of it. The cash flow of it is what, what you're having to deal with, and that's why you have the positions that you're in. But it does look like you finished last year in the black. You have budgeted for the current fiscal year uh, a, a budgetary fund balancer to try to build those reserves back up. If you get the money back from FEMA, that will be an overnight buildup of back pretty much where you were. Slightly reduced, but hopefully uh, I think your plan to get back into, into the game is probably good. So uh, that's the fiscal year 19. Fiscal year 20 looks, uh, you know, I hate to say it, it's kind of dull at this point, but it looks like it's going along as you had expected. Uh, we are trying to catch up for December. Uh, you have had a staff reduction. Uh, the person who was handling that uh, uh, left, but is still helping out. So we appreciate that help. But we are behind, uh, uh, not as much as we were, but it's, uh, still a little behind. But we'll be getting caught up here in the next couple of weeks. We do hope to try to get your audit underway, uh, maybe by the end of February, uh, a lot sooner than uh, last year, hopefully and we'll know for sure about fiscal year 19 at that point in time. We have not hard closed out fiscal year 19. Uh, I haven't seen anything that we need to post to it, but you never know. <laughs> so yeah. as we go through the audit process and closing out our books to get ready for that, it will give you a better idea. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Wallace, first of all, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Councilperson Roman? Councilperson uh, Urban? Uh, the only questions I have would be um, within as we get into the audit. So. Okay. Good for you. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Attorney, questions or comments? Madam Clerk, questions or comments? And Madam Manager, questions or comments? Just thank you for your diligence. I appreciate it, okay. Mr. Walls. Thank Thanks. And thank you, Madam Manager, for always keeping everything uh, up to par in, in, in this village when, you know, changes happen that are 
un unforeseen and, and, and you're always on top of it and you always you know, fix yeah. things as, as, as quickly as, as possible. So we appreciate you and thank you very much. Thank you. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the, um, the stage now in the meeting where we are at Good and Welfare. If anybody wants to come up and talk about anything at all concerning administration and finance, this is your time to do so. All right, seeing no movement. So we're gonna move on. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the administration and finance meeting? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. The Village of El Portal Administration and Finance Committee meeting for uh, Tuesday, January 21st will be a adjourned at 8, 12 p.m. Thank you guys very much, I appreciate it. <laughs>